<clears throat> All right, welcome to module seven, uh, basic communication skills. Hey, upon completion of this module, you will be able to interpret inf information and instructions uh, presented in both verbal and written form, communicate effectively in on-the-job situations using verbal and written skills, <clears throat> and communicate effectively on the job using electronic communication devices. <laughs> okay, performance tasks, fill out a work-related form supplied by your instructor. Read instructions from how to properly don a safety harness, harness and orally instruct another person to don the apparatus. And perform a given task after listening to oral instructions. <clears throat> okay, communication process starts with a sender through a communication channel to a receiver and then there's feedback from the receiver to the sender. Okay, are you a good listener? Guys, you should probably go through this here, kind of see where you fall on here. Um, <clears throat> we have to remember is I think sometimes as individuals we get hung up on making sure people know that we're listening and we don't necessarily actually hear what they're saying. I know that kind of sounds redundant, but um, actually listening listening attentively you also need to make sure that you're getting the information that they're trying to relay to you as well <clears throat> okay talking on the phone in front of co-workers supervisors and customers is rude and unprofessional some of you that are Kalinga locals probably have experienced this at a time or two at some of our local establishments and understand what, what I'm talking about Okay. An important at attribute of an effective speaker is the ability to explain and simplify complex topics. If you do not understand what a speaker is saying, ask the speaker questions for clarification. <clears throat> when communication on, on the job, when communicating on the job, you should maintain eye contact and encourage listeners to take notes if necessary. Okay, when listening to instructions, the best way to make sure you get all of the information is to first take notes, then ask questions at appropriate times, and repeat a summary of the instructions. <laughs> okay, real quick back on this slide, guys. Repeating the instructions, um, you know, I've worked for people in the past that sometimes would be in a rush and you know, may not want to take the time when you're repeating instructions just, just to verify things. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is <clears throat> they're going to be less upset in the long run if you, if you repeat that just to verify things are correct than if you do the wrong task. Okay. When reading instructions or a series of steps, you should read the directions completely. Okay. Special features in books that help you locate information um, including tables of contents, indexes, and glossaries. Include tables of contents, indexes, and glossaries. <clears throat> hey, accuracy is an important practice in writing to avoid errors that can cost time and money. Here's an example of a hot work permit. If you have any experience in the uh, oil fields, you've probably worked with these in the past. Okay. With email, nonverbal communication is lost, and your message must be carefully composed to avoid being misinterpreted by the recipients. Um, I think, you know, we've all probably had situations where we've been texting, and sometimes it's uh, the context does, can't show sarcasm or any of the feelings that you're trying to relay just by the typed word, and that's, that's what we're talking about here. It has to be, you know, pretty specific to get across everything you're trying to say. Um, to make sure your points are understood in an email, you can write in a concise format using bulleted or numbered items. <clears throat> All right, guys, so that concludes the basic communications. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in class. Have a good day.